Hey guys, it's Phil coming at you with another video. I'm excited to be back, and yes, this will be a practice question, practice question video. So, woo, we are back doing that. I promised that I would ever, after everything kind of settled down. So those that don't know, I do lectures at the University of Michigan every once in a while, and I'm blessed to be able to do that. But that also takes away a lot of my concentration away from doing like questions and stuff like that. So I just always like to be transparent and say like, hey, this is why. So yeah, I was doing that. So that's super hype. So a couple of people in that class were like, hey, I watch your videos and stuff. So that's pretty cool to be able to have people that I know in real life know and watch my videos and actually benefit from it. Makes me excited. Makes me more motivated and it just fires me up to continue doing it. And with that being said, yeah, a lot of things going on today. A lot of new things that I'll announce a little later in the video, but without further ado we had 17 people pass since the last time that i uploaded a video so let's get that rolling so first person on the list sarah p adrian b monique m jan p claudia l keisha g reagan s marcia w helen e nicole c mindy a claudia c krishana f makisha b nisha p Kim H, I star B. So, and something that kind of happened during the study group that last night that I kind of want to reiterate in a live video is uh, remember why you started. A lot of people are going through this journey wondering like what the heck's going on. I feel alone. I want to reschedule my exam. I don't feel prepared. Remember why you started and if you want to reschedule your exam, think how that's going to impact yourself, the people you care about, and the future self within that situation because a lot of times we just let anxiety prevent us from doing things that we ultimately want to do so just do it anyway and push through believe in yourself and know that regardless of what anxiety is trying to tell you you're more powerful than you think and also not everything is going to work for everyone so you may hear other people say that they did this or studied for this amount of time or did this thing over here and it may not work for you so you need to tailor your specific thing to what is best for you don't go with what they say go with what you feel and what you actually know about yourself and for your prep don't base it on what other people are telling you and i'm not saying to study in isolation or be in isolation but that doesn't mean that all good com not all company is good company so you need to keep a company that is good for you and trying to feel you up and having mutual relationships not what people can just get from you or take from you or anything like that and knowing that if you are standing in your own way it could be killing blessings like if you think oh my gosh i didn't get 100 percent on the practice exam i don't think i'm going to do well on the exam or this is what i got on the practice exam or this is how i'm doing during practice questions don't overwhelm yourself because again this isn't a 4.0 this isn't 100 percent. i don't know anyone ever that has gotten 100 percent. i didn't get 100 percent and you guys still listen to me so keep that in mind like the standard you're setting yourself at may be a standard that you might not even be able to meet and you're defeating yourself on getting to where you actually want to go so stay in your lane stay with what you know be with where you're at and let's get the heck on with it y'all because we have a lot of things in store for you but you have to be willing to put that in and put yourself forward in the process so with that said let's get into the new things as well as the announcements so i do still offer tutoring so if you're interested send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com my schedule does book out like a week week and a half in advance so keep that in mind if your exam is coming up super duper close it's not that i don't want to help you it's just i have a lot of people already scheduled and a lot of people that were helping in advance on with that so the next study groups those that don't know, I have weekly study groups on Sundays. The time starts at 7 p.m. And I say it goes until 9 p.m., but oftentimes we're looking more at like 10 p.m., 10.30, and last night ended at 11 p.m. Because there's a question and answer component that you can directly interact with me, hear my opinion, explain your situation, what could work with you, what hasn't worked for you, and we come up with a solution. So those that were there last night, no, it was pretty powerful. Like I feel like I was sharing as much about myself as well as exchanging things with people's prep so the next study group is 6-2 acronym and practice questions that has 
always been one of the most popular options that I have done. So feel free if you're wanting an interest in that, sign up as soon as you can because it may fill up actually this time. Last time we were close to being full. So 616, DSM-5 and medications is the one after that. 623, Freudian theories after that one. 630, client interventions and communication styles. 7-7, seven, seven, human developmental theories, and yes, we are skipping 6-9 because I will be going on a little vacation with my family. So that is why that is not listed up there. And again, that's 7 and 9 p.m. Eastern time. Again, stretches a little further than that. My email is berda24 at gmail.com. Something new is that I created a Facebook page for you guys to interact with me a little bit more directly as well as if you could just go to that page post a review like what you found helpful with me if you worked with me on an individual tutoring basis in my study groups or even just about the videos go on there give it a thumbs up and a like because that's where I'll be posting the free study group that I'm doing Saturday the time the link and the all that start time will be on there as well as leave a review if you found it helpful so that we have other people who find the resources and things in their journey as well and I will be doing a pilot private pilot prep thing which is going to be like a 12 week course that I walk through 10 to 15 people will be in there I'll be doing direct lessons on like KSA specific like topics provide practice questions walk you through it be like the closest thing to an individual tutoring setting with other people and the current one well the previous one that I did the people are still interacting I'm still interacting with them inquiring developing and getting them to pass their exams so if you're interested in that send me an email again at berda24 at gmail.com and if you have any questions about like prices and stuff the email is the best way to hit me up but let's get back into these practice questions hype for being back on the questions all right so question one a social worker in an outpatient clinic is completing an intake assessment with a couple and their two children who recently immigrated when the social worker inquired about substance use in the family the parents are that alcohol use is a part of the traditions of their culture, their country of origin. The parents report that they will drink alcohol as a family and at times will become intoxicated. What would be the best thing for the social worker to do in this situation? So, we are a social worker in an outpatient clinic, completing an intake assessment. So, this is the first visit that we've had with this. And there's a couple in there, two children. So, it is a family unit they recently immigrated so they may have different views and cultural aspects that we may have to keep in mind while breaking down this question when the social worker inquired about substance use so that is the part of the assessment that it's asking about the parents said that alcohol is a part of the traditions of the country of origin and that they will drink alcohol as a family and even become intoxicated so them and the children are becoming intoxicated at times so this is definitely going to be an application question and we know it's an application question because one it is a clinical situation and, and two we have to ra react in an appropriate manner remember recall questions are ones that we all strive for to be on the exam they're going to be our basic uh, information and then reasoning is going to be more of our ethical and uh, research and program stuff so let's look at the answers a provide information to the family on the negative impacts that alcohol can have on them B contact child protective services C continue with the intake assessment and research the family's country of origin to be better prepared for the next session D respect the family's cultural beliefs and continue to identify what the family would like to work on so a provide information would be educate why because we're doing something then providing them some information in the session that could be beneficial to the family unit contact child protective services would be safety why because we're directing and intervening in a situation that could potentially be hazardous for somebody so we need to do something around that continue on with the intake so that's an action that we are currently doing and then research the family research the family's country of origin to better be prepared intervene all around because we are better educating and better equipping ourselves to help this family in some way shape or form do you respect the family's cultural beliefs and continue to identify the family would like to work on that is also going to be intervene why because we are ignoring the situation of the alcohol and continuing to work with 
the family. So don't get caught up on identify what the family would like to work on. Yes, that's important, and we'd be starting with where they're at, but keep in mind we are ignoring what the question is actually saying. So you look at it. We are talking about substance use in the family, and the parents are letting their children drink alcohol. Yes, this is an ethical consideration. However, let's look at it. So we wouldn't provide information on the dangers of it. Why? Because it's their country of origin and what they've known and traditions within that. Us providing information as an outsider is not going to help this family and not going to dictate and change what they're actually going to do. So with that, also, we're not going to respect the cultural family beliefs of them and continue on. Yes, culture is important. Yes, we have to acknowledge it. But we do not let that cover our eyes of what we know safety and all of these other interventions are about. They are in the United States, so thus we have to view them through the United States lens. When it's not as severe as children drinking alcohol, then we can start uh, respecting the culture a little further and examining those um, rules and regulations. For C as well, we would not continue on with the intake because the alcohol is a huge sign here that kids are drinking alcohol. And in the United States, it is illegal and could be having detrimental impacts on the children's one, development, and two, cognitive abilities. So in this answer, contacting CPS would be the best possible answer. And a lot of times people are like, well, why are we contacting CPS? This is eliminating the, the therapeutic relationship or rapport building. Actually, most times when we're contacting CPS, there could be information related and there would be continued monitoring because after this family leaves this, because keep in mind, we're also in an outpatient clinic. So once clients are outside of the outpatient clinic, it's up to them to do whatever they feel is necessary, what is best for them. So us getting CPS involved, they'll do outside monitoring and ensure this family is safe as well as the children aren't being put in potentially harmful situations. So that is how we would look at that particular answer. So question two. A social worker is working as a clinical supervisor. So a social worker working as a clinical supervisor is meeting with one of their supervisees for their weekly supervision. During supervision, the supervisee states that one of her clients is unemployed and would like to mold the agency's lawn in exchange for his services. Bartering has not traditionally been done at their agency, but is performed in other service fields in the community. What would be the best response for the clinical supervisor to provide Z? So, a social worker is working as a clinical supervisor, so we're in an administrative type role. We're meeting with one of the supervisees for their weekly supervision, so this is something we do regulator and as well as monitor. So during the supervi supervision, the supervisee states that one of the clients is unemployed and would like to mow the agency's lawn in exchange for services. So that is the main issue that we're kind of looking at and keeping in mind. And bartering has not traditionally been done in their agency. However, has been performed in other service industries in the community. What would be the best response for the clinical supervisor to provide to the supervisee? And this is what we're going to be looking at a more of a reasoning type situation. Yes, it's kind of a clinical clinical situation. However, it's more about our code of ethics and what is ethical practice in the making. So keep that in mind as we examine the answers. A, inform the supervisee that bartering would not be appropriate as the social workers attempt to avoid any dual relationships. B, inform the supervisee that bartering is inappropriate as the agency needs to be compensated adequately for the services that are provided. C, inform the supervisee that bartering would not, that would be appropriate in this situation since it is a community norm, but the social worker should continue to monitor the situation. D, inform the supervisee that bartering would be appropriate as it is unethical for social workers to deny services to be in need. So with that, we have to keep in mind that it is not been done by our agency, but it is done in the community. So that is going to be a key thing here. So A would be incorrect. So we'll rule that one out because Yes, we want to avoid dual relationships, but there's no dual relationship within this. We don't own the agency. We're just a product of what the agency is, as well as the client is 
put in a proposition up. He's not just going to mow in the lawn and being like, all right, what can I get from this? He is saying, I need services. I don't have money, but I can do this in exchange for the services that you provide. So B would be incorrect here because yes, we want to be compensated. If bartering is a part of the community, we kind of had to entertain that and exchange like, what is the cost benefit? Is there exploitation possibly being in the mix? And what would be most appropriate for us to do in this situation? So yes, we need to be compensated, but in the code of ethics, if bartering is a part of the norm of the community, it can be entertained, but the social worker bears the burden of doing such arrangements. So if it is okay with the agency as well as okay with the social worker that's performing the services, then it is okay for bartering to happen. So two closely related answers of saying that it would be appropriate within this, because keep in mind, most answer responses are going to be similar, but the rationale behind it, what could be one of the ways that things are going to be incorrect. So in this, it is we're going to accept it because it's a community norm and the social worker should continue to monitor is a possibility and or are we going to do it because we don't deny people of need so there's no sense of us actually not providing services to this guy so we can't assume that just because we're not doing this bartering arrangement that we won't seek services for the guy so we will allow for bartering to happen in this situation but continue to monitor because let's say he starts mowing the lawn for a couple of sessions, then he gets a job, then the bartering situation would not have to continue. So it could be a temporary thing in the interim that he can actually get some income and or we can get him on some insurance so that way and be able to provide the services in that possible way. Again, keep in mind, it's a norm within the community. This is an anomaly situation where we just think of, oh, wow, you can totally barter with us because then it might be exploitation and a dual relationship. So that's how we would look at that question. Question number three. A case management social worker is meeting with a 30-year-old male who is referred to them by a therapist at their agency. The therapist reports that the man has been struggling with getting to their appointments, is at risk for losing their apartment, and would like to apply for food benefits. The case manager begins to complete an eligibility assessment with the man and discovers that the man does not want any assistance from the case manager. What should the social worker do first in this situation? So we are a case management social worker. We are meeting with a 30-year-old male who was referred to us by a therapist. So this is going to be our first interaction. Why? How do we know this? Because they're referred to us for the first time. Therapist reports that the man has been struggling with getting to his appointments at risk as well as would like to apply for food benefits. And keep in mind that this is what the therapist is telling us, not what the client is telling us. So the case manager begins to do eligibility. So they start to gather what the client wants and what the client needs and what they could actually do and discovers that the man does not want any assistance from the case manager. So that's what the man wants, not what the therapist wants, but not what the case manager thinks that they want. So this would be an application question because it's a clinical write-up or case situation that we have to respond to adequately in an appropriate manner. So with that, we have to look at the answers. So explore why the man does not want assistance from the case manager. Feelings, why? Because feelings is always a starting where the client is gathering their perspective and then going on from there. We can't assume anything from this man or we can't tell the man what he actually needs. So keep that in mind. Discuss with the man why the therapist referred him to the case manager. This would be Educate. Why is this educate? We're, pro we're providing the man information for why the referral services were put in, but we're kind of overstepping our boundaries here and kind of forcing this person within this. Why? Because if we say this is the reasons why you're being referred and this is what I have to do, kind of turn the client off. End the session with the man since he does not want any assistance. This would be intervene. Why is it intervene? Because we're doing something and ending something and we're not just letting the situation be what it is.
Provide the man with information that could be useful to improve his situation. Education. Why? Because we are doing something, but it's providing him information. And whenever there's information being provided, it's going to be that educate. Unless it's for something outside, then it's advocate. But I digress. So when we're looking at that, we would automatically want to rule out B. We're going to rule out B here because we can't tell this man what he wants or why he needs what we're trying to offer him. It's up to him whether he wants to engage or not. And it's not our job to force something onto somebody. So we wouldn't try to justify our actions and why he needs to actually be there. We wouldn't end the session with the man because... Yes, we may ultimately end up doing that, but that's jumping the gun and just getting ahead of ourselves and be like, this is what needs to happen anyway. I have other stuff that I could possibly be doing. How about we need to gather a little more info about this before we just let this man go? Because he's still at risk for a lot of things, but we don't want to get distracted. And we'd possibly provide the man with information that could be useful for a situation ultimately, but not at this given moment because we need to figure out what the man's stance is and why he changed his mind is it us is it did his situation change etc so we would always start where the client is and gather their picture of the situation rather than trying to assume things because assuming things makes a, a terrible situation and kind of puts a bad taste in the therapist's mouth as well as the the client's mouth so that's how we would look at that situation in particular so question four a social worker at a family agency has been working with a couple for the past five months. The couple presented for to treatment for issues related to communication in the relationship. The couple has been utilizing communication skills, boundary setting resources, and role playing in session, which has improved their relationship. The social worker and wife believe that it is time for the couple to prepare for discharge from therapy. The husband does not feel like the couple is ready for discharge and has missed the past two sessions. What would be the most appropriate thing for the social worker to do in this situation? So, a social worker at a family agency has been working with a couple for the past five months. So, there's two people, so the answer would have to include both of them. So, the couple presents for treatment for communication issues within their relationship. And the couple has been utilizing communication skills, boundary setting, resources, and role play in session. So that's what they've been doing, the intervention. And it has helped improve the relationship. So that's good to hear that what they've been doing has been helping. And social worker and wife believe that is whoops. And believe that it is time for discharge from therapy. And keep in mind here that it says the social worker and wife. Husband's not included. Because the husband does not feel like the couple is ready for discharge and has missed the past two sessions. So maybe some regression and or resistance on his end to get that done. So when we're looking at this, this one is going to be an application and reason because it is a clinical situation as well as kind of concerns whether what is our ethical duties and what is our responsibility within the situation about doing this so reach out to the husband to understand his stance better inform the wife that without her husband that services cannot continue encourage the wife to talk with her husband about his view of therapy and terminate the couple since the wife would like to and the husband no longer attends so with this you can do the acronym so a would be intervene. Why? Because we'd be doing something to advance the clinical situation and treatment center. So that'd be us only focusing on the husband and not including the wife in that. Inform the wife that without her husband that her services cannot continue. So that is going to be educate. Why? Because we're informing her and or providing her information in this. Encourage the wife to talk with her husband about his view of therapy. So this one is going to be more or less feelings and intervene. Feelings to kind of gather his type of, his view of services, but we'll also we're empowering her to do it. So that is what we had to keep in mind there. And then terminate, terminate the couple since the wife would like to do it, would be intervene. But keep in mind here that we have the wife. We have the wife to talk to the husband 
and we have the wife and just the husband. So A would be ruled out because us reaching out to the husband independently wouldn't be helping them do this because why? Because they they came for us or to us for communication issues in their relationship. Us overstepping and communicating for the wife to the husband, not helping them advance their clinical and treatment goals. Us providing information to the wife about, hey, we're about to end services if your husband doesn't come back. She wants the services to be discharged anyway. So just not including the husband in this decision is not clinically appropriate. Overstepping the bounds, yes, it could be higher up in the acronym. But we would not ultimately want to do that. And again, terminate the couple since the wife would like to do that would be inappropriate because the key thing here is the husband doesn't want to and he's missed the past two sessions why has he missed them what's changed why does he feel like there may be their need for more services does he want to be in the relationship etc so we would want to encourage the wife to do what she does in the relationship and communicate have them gather together get the consensus of what the heck's going on and get more clarification on the therapist end of things. So C would be the best possible answer. So question number five. A social worker who has been working with a father and his 10 year old son around behavioral issues that the son was having at school. The social worker and 10 year old have been able to improve the boy's behavior at school and he has improved his grades enough to advance to the next grade. In the most recent session, the boy invites the social worker to his birthday party since he has helped him so much. What should the social worker do in this situation? So a social worker who has been working with a father and 10 year old son. Key thing is behavioral issues that the son was having at school. The social worker and 10 year old have been able to improve the boy's behavior and he's going to be advancing to the next grade. So a lot of progress was made in that treatment and in the most recent session the boy invites the social worker to his birthday party since he has helped him build the relationship build that rapport and it has come back to get him into an ethical situation so without saying anything further this would be a reasoning question why ethical consideration what are we allowed to do as social workers what are we not allowed to do where's the boundaries lie and what is appropriate so keep that in mind as we look at the answers. A, inform the boy that the social worker would not be able to attend since he already has plans for that day. B, inform the boy that the social worker would not be able to attend since it is against his ethical code. C, inform the boy that the social worker would not be able to attend since it is against his agency's policy. B, inform the boy that the social worker will not be able to attend the party and gather more information around it. So D would automatically be thrown out because you wouldn't just be like, hey, I can totally go. <laughs> Let's get this rolling. What's the info? What's the day? What's the time? Because again, we do not want to have sticky boundaries. We don't want to put ourselves into a dual relationship where it is further than it actually is. Therapist, client relationships, professional only, no personal entity unless there's cultural considerations etc etc but that's not in this situation so now it's not here nor there so if you notice all of the answers are the same with that we're informing him that we would not be able to attend and the reasoning is the only difference here so we would not do it because we already had plans for that day because that opens the door to him saying what about this other day what about this other thing what about this other thing you got to nip it in the bud and not let it grow further than it needs to go and say other justification for the reasoning behind it because a definitely opens the door to other considerations and other reasons for things to happen so when there are clinical and ethical situations boundaries and information are key within those so this is where we have to decide is it because the ethical code or agency policy is the reason behind this so we would definitely rule out c why because the code of ethics overrides any agency policy that you can ever have and in the code of ethics specifically it says 
clients are supposed to be first, the code of ethics, and then agency policy underneath that. So your agency can have a code, and if it's against the code of ethics, it doesn't stand a chance against it. So that is how you would answer that particular question. So comment any feedback that you have down below. Hit the thumbs up button down below as well. So it lets me know that you guys like what is currently going on with the content and all of that stuff. Subscribe for more videos. And once you hit subscribe, hit the bell icon afterwards because it will send you an email every time that I upload. And again, a lot of announcements. But if you're interested in tutoring, my email is berda24 at gmail.com. The next study groups are 6-2 acronym and practice questions, 6-16 DSM-5 and medications, 6-23 forwarding theory, 6-30 client interventions communication styles, 7-7 human developmental theories, and that is Sundays, 7 to 9 p.m. or longer. And my email is berda24 at gmail.com. And if you'd like to, go on Facebook and search fill on the gaps LLC hit the thumbs up button on that because I'll be announcing a free study group on Saturday question and answer style as well as leave a review to let people know that it is something that is helpful if you find it helpful I have a pilot prep group that I'm doing my email is berda at gmail.com for details on that and I started a tradition of leaving you guys with a quote and a quote that I feel is very, very settling with what I have seen and heard from a lot of people is do not let the small things kill the big picture. A lot of people are focusing on little details and little things that don't entirely matter and letting it ruin everything that, one, they have, two, the things that they possess, or three, what their goals and visions are for their future. So, with that said... Thank you guys so much for the support. I appreciate you guys letting me be able to do this. And if you have any questions or need anything, reach out to me. But if not, have a happy Memorial Day. Focus on yourself, your family, the people that are close to you, and embrace them as much as you possibly can. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace out.